I want to continue designing my jig here in my assembly. So the first thing, I decided when I look at my part isometrically, I would like it in this orientation. It was 180 degrees before, so I just flipped the alignment of the two planes. And the other thing I've done, if I push Control tab so I've downloaded my bushings and I've created an assembly out of those. So I have my liner bushing and my slip fix renewable bushing together in an assembly. I'll control tab back to my main assembly. And the next thing I want to do is I want to insert them into the proper location. So I'm going to select insert components because they're open. They're here. I'll select them and I'll move out here and I'll just place them roughly where they go. And then next we're going to fully define them with some meats. So I'm going to select the bushing plate to plane I created zoom in and rotate around a little bit. I'm going to hold control, select this bottom face of my bushing, release control, and I'll make those coincident. I'll go back to the isometric view, just zoom in again. So I'm going to select this hole. I could have also selected this OD. I'm going to hold control, select this hole, release control, and I want these to be concentric. So if I rotate this, it rotates around, and that's what I want. Later, when I'm closer to being done, I'll reorient this where I want it and add the hole for the lock screw. So I'm just going to fit the screen again. I'll minimize this. And anytime I do something in an assembly and I'm happy with it, especially an assembly such as this is going to become quite large, I'll always rebuild and save it right away. This way, if I totally mess it up, I'll just close it down without saving and open it back up again. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create the plate that this bushing will be press fit into. To do that, I'm going to select the drop down arrow below insert components until I want to insert a new part. I'm going to click to accept that. And I'm going to right click on this new part and I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call it the bushing plate. So I've named it the bushing plate. Move this over a bit. And now I want to create it. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to tell it to edit the part. Everything else will go see through because I'm editing this blank part. Once again, I'm going to rotate around. I'm going to tell I want to work from this plane that's at the bottom of the bushing. And I'll say, I'm going to go to features that I want to make an extrude boss. And I'll look normal to that. If that's not the view I want, I'll just flip the normal to again. And I'm going to create a corner rectangle. I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to come over here. I'll push escape to stop that. Now I have no idea what size I want this. That's okay. I'm just creating a dummy part and I'll finalize it as I build the jig and tweak it as I go through the process. So I'm going to also add a center line from the origin through my part. I'll select these two edges while holding control, still holding control, select the center line. I'll release control and I'll make those symmetric. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension from the edge of my part to this edge and I'll make that two inches for now. Again, I'll change it later as I need to. And then I'm going to dimension from this edge of my part to here and I'll make that two inches as well because I don't have any idea what I want it yet. Then I'll select this line, move over and click and I'll make that six inches. So I'll go back to the isometric view. I'm going to exit the sketch. I'm in the extrusion here. And I'm going to tell it I want it to be a half inch thick, the same as the length of the bushing. I'm going to rotate around. It's going the wrong way. So I'm going to flip its direction and I'll say OK. So I've added this plate and I'm still editing it. Next, I want to cut a hole for the bushing. So I'm going to select the top face, look normal to it again. This time I'm going to tell it the feature is an extrude cut. And I'm just going to zoom in and use this circle center. Come out and click. And then I can use mouse gestures to dimension it. I'll make it three quarters. And now I have the correct diameter. Keep in mind I still have to tolerance this appropriately for machining. So I'm going to go back to the isometric view. I'm going to exit the sketch. And I'm going to tell it the cut is through all. Say OK. And I'll stop editing this part. So now I've added a bushing plate. And keep in mind, I'll probably edit this two or three times yet before I'm done. So next, I'm going to select this part. And I'm going to tell it to open in its current position. And I can see here, 
This is telling me it was created in the context of the assembly. I'm going to double click on the sketch to bring up the dimension, then double click on the dimension and it's three quarters. And now I want to make it the actual size it needs to be. So I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to come over here and tell it that I need a limit dimension. And I would like it to be four decimal places. And I'm going to come here to my limit size and I made it three quarters and it's actual size. Here's the chart I've downloaded from my bushing supplier for the recommended hole size. So it needs to be plus. So even though this is negative, I'm going to make it plus by adding the plus sign. I'm going to say 0 0.007 tenths. And then up here in the other plus, I want 1000. So I'll put 0, whoops, 0 0.001. Say OK. And now I have the proper limit dimension for this bushing hole. Now I have the proper hole size. I'm going to exit the sketch and I'll rebuild and I'll save my part and I'll just close that part. I'll go back to my assembly and I'm going to control tab back here and I'm just going to close the sub assembly as well. And then I'm going to rebuild and save my work. And in the next video, we'll continue on from there.